Hi there, um, in this video we're going to look at tables um, and see how you import them into ArcMap and um, we're also going to look at how you display the information that's held within tables um, and do various other things but it's going to be very much a focus on, on working with tables and Excel type data. Um, so for this exercise we are going to be looking at some census data um, and we're going to first of all go into Arc Catalog first thing I want to do is to actually create a new geodatabase. Um, just imagine you're working on a new project um, and, and I'm going to be doing a load of analysis of some census data so I'm kind of creating a new uh, geodatabase to hold all this information. So I've created my new geodatabase and what I will now need to do is to um, get some bits of data inside the geodatabase. Um, I've already got some, some, some data that I need to um, get in there um, and this is from the um, census information. Um, there is a sort of standardized um, information so I'm going to first of all um, bring this, date, this, this information into the geodatabase. So I'm going to um, add this particular shape file um, make sure I put it in the right location so I'm going to add it to the census geodatabase um, and this is actually the census output area um, and these are sort of geographically confined areas that are used to display census information so this is already kind of pre-made for us so I'm just going to bring that into the um, geodatabase first of all. So we're just going to import that into the geodatabase and wait for the confirmation that the import's been successful. So there we go, I've now added that into the um, geodatabase. So if I now have a look inside there I've got this first uh, feature class inside there which is the um, census output area. Um, we'll have a look at that shortly inside ArcMap. Uh, the next thing I want to do is now I want to import some of the um, the data that we're going to display. And This data is generally held in tables and actually for this example it's actually held in Excel tables and we're going to show you how to display that information spatially um, in a minute. So first of all I need to go and find the data. So we've got various bits of different data here and this is all kind of census related data and as you can see it's in Excel sheets um, and we're going to connect it together with the spatial information which is held in here in the census output areas um, and then we can display it um, spatially uh, on maps, otherwise it's just in a, in a table. Um, so I'm going to look at the um, this yeah, this one down here. This is this is about information about how people travel to work. Um, but before I do any of that, I need to actually import this uh, into my geo database. Um, so if I if I go and look at the contents of this Excel sheet, it's actually showing me the two worksheets um, that are inside there and I actually I know that I just need the front worksheet so if we have a quick look and we can preview the table of data um, so there we go so this is kind of this is the um, census data that's collected uh, it's talking about the number of people in a particular area and it's saying how they travel to work um, and we're going to use a certain column in here to connect it together with the, um, the spatial information that we've already got mapped um, before we do that, we have to actually import this into our um, geo database. So I'm going to. Um, it's only the first first worksheet that I want to import, so I'm just going to um, what we would call export it to the geo database. So um, I just need to select an output location for it, um, and I know that I want to put it inside the geo database I've just created. So I'm going to make sure it goes into the right place. Um, down the bottom here it's telling me all of the um, fields that are already in that Excel spreadsheet and that table in fact. Um, so I just need to give the um, output table a name so that when it 
when it is imported it will have that name. So I'm going to just call it travel to work. And and then click OK and then that will import that table into my geodatabase. And there we go, table to table. So it's now it's now been added to my geodatabase. So I can just double double click on the geodatabase and there we go. So we've got the um, the existing spatial information, which is the um, census output areas, and now I've got a table um, with all the information about how people travel to work. But at the moment, those two bits of information are not linked together, so we need to do something in ArcMap to link them together so that we can display the travel information spatially. Um, and hopefully that will make more sense when we go back to ArcMap and have a look. So if we just pop back to ArcMap now, and we go into our catalogue, and we can go down to our geodatabase that we've just created. So there's the um, census geodatabase. So first of all, I'm going to um, add this feature class, which is the um, census output areas, and you'll see what this is. Um, so it's telling me that there is no spatial information, and that's partly because I haven't actually set the spatial information for that. So let's just go and set the spatial information for this one. So again, I can right click over here properties and there we go there's nothing so I'm going to just set it to British National Grid um, which we should always do really before we start but I've forgotten so there we go and we can just double check that that has actually updated if I just go down again into the properties and again just check the source and it should now say British National Grid as it does so that's done um, and really this these are all um, physical areas um, on the ground um, and the, these are worked out by the um, census people um, as, as actually areas of population and the idea is that each of these shapes should have a roughly similar number of population in um, so it's useful for, for, for comparison purposes we're actually looking at the, um, the high wheeled area outstanding natural beauty here the designated area so um, hence this strange looking shape but we actually have these we can actually have these output areas for the whole country um, but the data we're using here is just for the um, the area of outstanding natural beauty so if I just have a quick look at the attributes um, for this data we'll see that there is not very much information in here at the moment um, none of the census information here in, in here all there is is this code um, which is quite important um, and this is the code that we're going to use to join the table, the Excel spreadsheet data about travel um, to the actual shapes here on the map. Um, and we're going to kind of merge the data together so that we can then display it in a, in a graphical way, but also you know spatially as well, which at the moment it's not. We're not able to display it spatially. Um, so the first thing I need to do is actually go and grab the table so I'm just going to grab the table. So we've now added the table, and of course at the moment we can't display it. It's not it's not connected to the map. Um, so we need to do that. Um, so how we do that is we create a join. So we're going to use that particular column, and we're going to join the data together. So we've got an option here to join. Um, and really what we're going to do is merge the table with the um, the shapes here you can see on the map. Um, so there we go. It says we're going to append additional data to this layer, so we're going to basically add the data in the table to this existing layer that you can see behind me. And we need to choose which layer we're going to do that to. Um, and obviously we've only got one layer here, but what we're going to do is we're going to have to choose a column in the layer that we're going to use. Um, and we know it's, the, it's, it's this code here. Um, and I need to choose the same number inside the table. And I'm going to make sure it keeps all the records and then I'm going to just run this validate join just to make sure that everything's working okay and there we get a confirmation that it's okay and now I'm going to just go okay and accept and it will now join the data together. So and we can now look at the attributes and we'll see that all of that information has now been added 
to this particular feature class. And how it's done that is it's basically compared this column from the um, the two sets of or the two tables. And again, there we are again the code. So it's used that to join the tables together. Um, so now we've got all of this information inside the census output areas, which means we can start to display it um, more visually and more spatially. The first thing we need to do before we do that though is to actually just create a new uh, feature class. So I'm just going to export that data out. If we don't do that, the join will be lost when we close the software down. So, so basically, to put this permanently together, we need to um, create a new feature class. So I'm just going to export it back to the um, geodatabase, census geodatabase. Um, just make sure I give it a name. So I'm just going to call it travel, and then I'm going to save. So we're asking it to do all features because we want it to export the entire lot and turn it into a new feature class. So there we go, and we can now add that data. So in effect, we don't need this anymore. So we've created a new data set. Um, and if we have a quick look at the attribute tables for it, we can see that it's all kind of merged together now. Um, in fact, we can actually remove one of these rows because that's just duplication. So I'm just going to go and remove that as well because um, we've got that from both tables so I'm just going to remove that field so there we go so what we're left with is a feature class with all of the census data attached to the polygons that you can see mapped behind here which means we can now start to do some interesting stuff in terms of how we display that census data so there are quite a few different ways that we can symbolize the data now that we've kind of added it um, so let's have a quick look at some of the ways of looking at this data. So I'm just going to zoom to the layer and now we can go into the symbology and we can actually um, think about how we might do that. Um, one way of doing it actually is quite useful. So it's to look at this kind of graduated colours. And we've got quite a lot of information sitting behind this census data. So, for example, if we want to look at um, how many people um, maybe drive to work um, we can then start to look at that. Um, so again, the computer will automatically symbolize this. Um, and then we can just simply apply that and we can now see really quickly um, in which areas um, we have the highest number of people driving to work.